Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Universal Orlando's Islands of Adventure. I came here today because I wanted to try a restaurant that I've never eaten at before and I've always wanted to, mainly because there's a big banner on the outside that says best theme park restaurant. So I thought today was a perfect day. And plus we're gonna ride some rides and have some fun. I'm so excited, let's go do this. The restaurant that I'm talking about is Mythos, and this place has some amazing theming. They have an outdoor dining area. We're actually standing in the back of the restaurant. When we go out front, we're gonna be able to give you a little bit more of a look, and plus we'll show you that banner that says, best theme park restaurant. The reason I wanted to actually start in the back of the restaurant is because you get a beautiful view and all the coasters and all the themed lands from the back side. And I just wanted to, you know, take a quick peek see because this is amazing. I love Universal Studios. As you can see, we have Seuss Landing over there and then we have the Hulk. Oh, it just launched off right now. And then Universal or Islands of Adventure's newest roller coaster, the Velociraptor coaster that isn't open yet, but should be opening pretty soon, hopefully. I don't normally dine at sit-down restaurants at Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure, so this is gonna be a learning experience for me. In fact, I didn't know how to make a reservation or even if I needed a reservation, but I did a little research and you can go on the website and make a reservation or you can just go up to the restaurant person and actually make a reservation. So that's what I did. I just walked up and I said, party of one, and they said, we got a five o'clock slot, and I said, put me in. So that gives us a couple minutes to actually maybe ride some rides and just explore. But once we get done eating, we'll still hang out in Islands of Adventure for a little bit. I do want to show you all these amazing fishes down here. Look at this. And you hear like that creepy noise? It's coming from the caves of Mythos. There's a lot of theming going on. Oh, look at that big turtle swimming up now too. This has always been a restaurant I wanted to try for such a long time, so I'm so, I'm so happy that I just decided to just come out and do it and just explore. Look at all the theming that goes into the outside of this restaurant. You can't deny that it's really, really well themed, especially like outside. We haven't gotten inside yet. Oh, hello there, friend. And since Seuss Landing is right next to the restaurant, maybe we'll go over there and ride a ride while we wait for our reservation time. But I wanted to just show you the theme park, like the best, world's best theme park restaurant sign, so you can just see it for yourself. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it and questioned it, and I've always questioned it. Right above the entrance there, awarded world's best theme park restaurant by the Theme Park Insider. As we make our way in Seuss Landing, I wanted to come over and ride the Seuss Trolley train ride right there. Recently, Dr. Seuss has been in the news and rumors are that they're actually recalling and canceling a lot of their books. And this is one of the funnest rides at Universal Studios, I feel like. It's kind of comparable to the People Mover, I would say, because all it does is just go round and round. But it is a train ride. It's a train ride high in the sky. I'm luckily enough to be able to use my express pass with my annual pass and we're going to be able to get a bird's eye view of all of Seuss Landing. I'm so excited. This is such a fun ride. I really think you guys are going to enjoy it. On top. As you can see here in the heart of Seuss Landing is a carousel cell that's truly outstanding. One breeze. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. From there to here, from here to there. We're going in. It's a very short ride, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And you get to see a lot of different great views. And that's why I like it. It's kind of just relaxing and nice slow pace. And as we walk out, we actually cut through a bakery full of delicious little snacks. 
a cat in the hat cookie, a Grinch book cover. That looks delicious. And tons of other amazing like bakery items. This is some good stuff. Look at all these cupcakes. Wow, a birthday cake mini whoopie pie. They have tons of little whoopie pies. A brookie, a thing one and a thing two. Oh wow, we're going to eat though, so we can't be doing this. I mean, we're going to eat like right now because they just sent me a text that said they can accommodate our reservation early so to proceed to the uh, entrance. Isn't that fancy? Once we get done with dinner, we're definitely going to hop right over to Hogsmeade and we're going to go to the Harry Potter area, get a drink at my personal favorite theme park, VAR, that's actually over there, and also maybe ride a ride or two because it's right next door to this. We're going to head right on in now though and I want to point out like all the different theming that I see because it's really nice when they add just that extra touch of things like look at these handles on the front doors, the entry foyer, this is basically where you would be waiting except for now we don't do that and it's just very nice. Look at those lights, they're like snakes, it's very cool in here. This restaurant is really, really cool looking. They have like an open kitchen layout. It looks like they have a brick oven over there. It kind of reminds me of the ovens at Via Napoli. And I just like the theming in here. It's very big. It's a cave. And we're gonna go over to our table and there's tons of fountains and rock sculptures along the way. It might get a little bit loud in here because like I said, it is a cave. It goes all the way up. So there might be an echo and there are fountains and that actually might make it a little bit difficult but we'll do the best that we can now that we're at our table i can take our mask off a little bit just relax and kind of enjoy one thing i can say already is it has such an amazing chair like i know i know a lot of people don't like think of things like this but I really do, like when I think of like a good restaurant, I think of like how comfortable the seating arrangements are, the lighting, the music, the atmosphere, and these chairs have such a great back support. I could almost like crack my back if I wanted to. Look at it, isn't it just, it's like a fancy, fancy chair. It's very heavy too. And I also like the rails and the little figurines they have on them. Little things of details, I say. Details are important. Since I plan on getting a drink over in Hogsmeade, I'm probably not gonna get a drink here, but they do have a big selection of like mixed drinks and cocktails signature to this restaurant. And they all have some pretty fancy names. So I was a little tempted there, but I wanna wait because my favorite drink is actually over there. I really like how they give you the QR code here. They give you like this ancient like tablet for mythos. This is really nifty. And I like this better than just like having something sit on like the table. And earlier I was talking about the drinks that they had here. These are the specialty drinks they have. They have like a Mythos Potion of the Gods, an Immortal Old Fashioned, a lot of really cool themed drinks. And I like that. I asked them for a paper menu because it's easier for me to show you the options that are on here and I'm really shocked with the prices of things. This is like a, a really good deal so far. I was expecting to spend like $50 for an entree, but the most expensive thing is only $28 here and that's a braised lamb shank. I asked my waitress what the most popular things were and she said, the 12 in bone in chop is $23 was popular. The beef loins were popular. So I decided to get the beef loins. But then she also said that the Mythos Signature Lamb Burger was very popular. And that's only $18. And since I was already like kind of planning on spending $50, I decided to get them both. That way I can try two of the most popular entrees here and I can get like a good fair judgment on how good the restaurant is. The prices and the theming already impressed me. If I can't eat all of the food because I'm probably not, I mean it's a two big entrees depending unless they're very small like the beef, uh, the beef loin medallions maybe they're like very small like medallions so if I can eat it all I will definitely eat, take a box and maybe eat it for lunch tomorrow but while I'm here I might as well just kind of explore and enjoy. Oh fancy. Oh I like it. Who's that for? 
Okay. I'm only kidding. It's for me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Normally, I don't think a lot of people actually order two entrees. They're not very big, though. And like I said, this is more for the video so that I can get a grasp on like the good items. And I've always wanted to eat here, so you know, might as well go big. I think the first thing we're going to dive into is the beef loin medallions and it comes with a potato puree, it comes with sea salt roasted carrots and then a red wine reduction. This looks really really good and it's cooked right to the perfect temperature. I think I'm just going to cut one open, get a little bit of a taste with just the red wine reduction and then I'm going to add a little potato and carrot to it. But that looks, oh yeah, that looks perfect. When it comes to like steaks and potatoes and stuff like that, I normally not a big fan of like red wine reduction, but this one might be pretty good. I got a good whiff of it and I was like, that smells pretty interesting. So I'm gonna just try the steak with the reduction. is really really good oh yeah I actually like the reduction and I did grab a little bit of the potato puree here and that is amazing so now we have to do a little bit of the combo where we get a little bit of the steak yep a little bit of the puree put it right on there perfect and that's what we're talking about this is a really really good dish and especially for the price that's what I'm super shocked about. A meal like this, probably at Disney or any other theme parks, probably would be running you $30, $40. Easily, my check would be $100 if I ordered two entrees. But I think we might be under 50 bucks still. That's, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? I'm also a fan of the carrots because these don't look like they're super soft, so they're gonna have a little snap into it. And I like that. I like when they're like, cooked a little bit all the way through but I still like a little snap in the carrot I don't like mushy carrots is anybody like mushy carrots <gasps> when I get a carrot I kind of want to snap into it like a Slim Jim snap into a carrot this was really good I ate everything except for just a little bit of the mashed potatoes that is left there it came with two carrots and then two of the medallions I mean three medallions and I would say that the medallions are probably like four ounces, so 12 ounces altogether. And this was, this was decent, under $30 for the dish. But now, we're gonna get the Mythos Signature Lamb Burger. Oh yeah, look at this bad boy. This looks good, doesn't it? And this sauce right here is the uh, feta olive aioli. So this is kind of like the cheese that comes on it. I asked for it on the side because you know, I don't know. <laughs> and it's purple. <laughs> so I think I'll dip my french fry in the feta olive aioli just to see what it tastes like. Mm. I'm glad I asked for it on the side. <laughs> but the lamb burger itself does come with some very nice caramelized onions right on top there and I can see it's very nicely seasoned. It's very delicious of looking like. I feel like it's been a long time since I've had lamb or lamb burger. I had a bison burger recently and uh, I think I remember, I think I liked the lamb burger the last time I had it. So we'll find out. The bun is definitely a little bit thicker. That's a thick bun. That is a good burger. Wow, I like it a lot. Very well seasoned. The sauce itself is supposed to come on the burger and that's like a part of the cheese. I'm not a big fan of feta, but I did ask the waitress and you can get other cheese on it if you want or you can get it on the side. And uh, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of feta, but if you do like feta, then this probably goes so well together. I can't really tell you which one I like more only because like it's it's a hard it's a hard deciding factor because I feel like when you're paying just like 10 bucks more actually I think it's only nine bucks more you're paying nine dollars more than the burger 
and you can get, you know what I mean, the uh, beef loin uh, medallions, and that comes with the potato puree and the carrots and the reduction, and I think that's a good deal. So if you're looking for more of a, like, upscale, like, entree, I think that's totally worth it. But when it comes to, like, size and quantity, the burger is definitely, definitely worth it. You know what I mean? Like, I ate the medallions pretty quickly. It wasn't filling at all. So, like, I'm probably going to finish all of this. And if you do eat a lot of food or, like, you like to be full, then uh, the burger is probably the way to go. You know what I mean? I ate those medallions pretty quick, but this one is, it's a, it's a big burger. Like, you've seen the bun. You've seen the burger. It's, it's like this. So, that's just a good thing to think about. But I think they're both very, very delicious. I mean, honestly, they're, it's a really good food. It's good food here, actually. Now I'm all finished. I eat just about all of my food. I mean, there's a couple fries left and the mashed potatoes I couldn't finish, but it was very delicious. And I'm gonna wait for my check. I wanna see how much everything cost. And then I will give you all my thoughts and opinions like outside when we leave, actually. It was only $38 with my annual pass discount. $38 for two entrees at the self-proclaimed best theme park restaurant. I think that's pretty fancy. I don't know if I can go out this way. Oh, I can. Oh, look at that. So this is the outdoor dining area. This is where we started our video off. Like down there is where I was uh, kind of doing the intro. Oh, this is very nice out here. I wouldn't mind actually, you know, here. I got the fancy chairs too. Now that we're all finished up, I think the big question is, do I think this is the best theme park restaurant? I would have to say no. I mean, it was a great restaurant, don't get me wrong. The prices were phenomenal. The theming was amazing. There was a lot of great things about it. There's nothing wrong with this restaurant. In fact, it might be the best Universal Studios restaurant because, I mean, not including City Walk. All the restaurants and sit-down restaurants that are in the parks, I've only been to two of them, and this one is the best one so far. I think I might try all the other restaurants, like on City Walk too, but I don't think this is the best. I mean, the price like I said perfect and the theming it was a really good restaurant if you were here I would definitely want to eat here and I plan on eating here again because I want to try some of those unique uh, cocktails they looked fantastic and speaking of cocktails I think I need to go over to Hogsmeade and uh, get my drink let me know in the comments though what you think if you've eaten here before or what your opinions are from just this video alone I mean, this is, like I said, a good restaurant and so much theming. Earlier, I seen the Velociraptor coaster testing there. I don't know if it's going to go off again, but it was really, really awesome. I'm excited to ride that when it does open. Look at that drop. It is definitely getting a little chilly out, though. I'm actually cold. I think I need to get a jacket or a hoodie or something. The short sleeves isn't working right now. And it's kind of strange because it's March. Time to head into Hogsmeade, and it's looking very crowded here today. The line for Hagrid's is going all the way back to the restaurant, actually. It's definitely worth it because it's one of my favorite rides in all of Orlando and theme parks. But where I want to go is into, like I said, my favorite little bar, or my favorite little theme park bar. Since it's actually a very busy day, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite places to duck out and actually get away from the crowds. A little, like a little nook and cranny in the corner that I like to go to, to like kind of just like calm down and you know, just get composure. Cause it can get very like frustrating or stressful, especially with a lot of big crowds. And inside Hogsmeade alone, it is very tight quarters. Even during the pandemic, as you can see, but we're gonna get in line right here because this is Hogshead and this is where I'm gonna actually be getting my drink. I don't know where the line begins though. I think they're just casting spells. I don't know if they're here to get drinks or maybe this is just a line. They were just casting spells, they're not a line. So I'm gonna get my drink and we'll take it to go and I'll show you my secret little spot over there. Maybe get another ride in. This sounds like a great time. We're gonna be getting a Deathly Hollows drink here. Now, this is one of my favorite drinks because of two reasons. Number one, I love Harry Potter. Number two, it's the only tattoo that I actually have. 
is the Deathly Hollow. So it always like, goes hand in hand for me. Every time I'm here, I gotta get it. I absolutely love it. And here it is, my favorite drink, the Deathly Hollows. A little bit of mixture of Hog's Head, Strongbow, and then Guinness. And now I'm gonna show you guys my little spot that I like to go to, and it's right back here, right next to Honey Dukes. And you get a little alley all to yourself. Can you hear the china in there? Isn't this so nice and relaxing? You can just sit back here, drink your beer, and just kind of enjoy the peace and quiet. No hustle and bustle, just the way I like it. Really nice and relaxed. Sometimes a uh, team member might walk back here, but I mean, unless you know, you don't know. People don't come back here. It's so nice though. Look at that. We're just walking around and enjoying like a little piece of Harry Potter all to ourselves on a very busy weekend day. It is seriously like the perfect nook and cranny though, honestly. <laughs> and I just love this drink. Oh, it's so good. Like you get the Guinness first and you know Guinness is Guinness and then you get the Hog's Head which is a nice, nice beer and then a nice sweet touch with the strong bow at the end. So good, much too good for children. And that put me in just the right mood. So now we're gonna move along and we're gonna try to ride another ride, hopefully before it gets a little dark out and the park closes in an hour. But first, have you seen this wizard? Universal doesn't allow you to film on mostly all the rides, but some of the rides actually, they don't like say it. So like I just take that as I can film on it, but it's very few, like maybe two of them. So the only other ride I can really film and show you happens to be a favorite of mine and it's Flight of the Hippogriff. And it's just a fun little coaster. It's kind of like uh, Goofy at Magic Kingdom. Just really nice. It's a little tiny coaster, mostly for kids. If you're sensitive of like roller coasters or heights, this is perfectly fine to ride. But could we just appreciate how beautiful Hogwarts is right now? Like it's the perfect sunset like time. The colors are just looking amazing. This place is truly magical, I can say. Here is a little like Hagrid Scarecrow and he's got pumpkins all around. This is such a fun little ride. Oh, here it comes. Look at her go! I also like riding this ride during a sunset because the views are beautiful. You're gonna be able to see the castle and all of Hogsmeade actually all lit up and it's gonna be beautiful, trust me, I love it. Look, you can actually see the hippogriff right here, a little animatronic. She's so pretty. Oh, look at how beautiful this is. Look at that castle. Isn't it amazing? It's like almost glowing. Oh, and there's that view that I was talking about. Holy moly. Oh boy, there we go. <laughs> oh, 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 it's so fast. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, coming in for a dip. Bottom boom. <laughs> That is a very, very short ride. I think it's like literally 20 seconds. So it's just like that, but it's so nice. Did you see those views? Unbelievable. That's why I like it so much. Now we're gonna start making our way out though. I wonder if we're gonna be able to see the Velociraptor coaster testing. You can see Hulk in the background and this is gonna look so pretty because I'm pretty sure the Velociraptor coaster is uh, blue. So it's gonna be blue and green. Isn't that pretty amazing? I waited as long as I could. I didn't see anything testing, so I think we'll just move along. But it is beautiful, trust me, and it's gonna be beautiful once it officially opens. But walking through here with the music is just as amazing. Look at that. And the fire. And then of course, Hogsmeade. Right through Jurassic Park. 
since I'm over here, I might as well stop and see if I can get my annual pass holder button and magnet inside the comic store here. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, green eggs and ham. That is really cool. The annual pass holder button for this month is green eggs and ham. I like it. This is really cool. Now, I don't collect these. I just pick them up because they're free. And I always I always remind myself, hey, you gotta pick it up. And then I kind of take it home and I, I usually like I'll set it on my fridge or put it on my little shelf. But I think I'm gonna give this one away. So if you actually want to win this, uh, just leave a comment on the video uh, letting me know what your favorite ride is at Universal Studios and I will randomly just select a comment. So leave a comment, your favorite ride, like the video and I'll reply back and get your shipping address and you can have a little green eggs and ham. Anywho's, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We will see you next time. Bye! And no, Wanda, this is chaos magic. You are the Scarlet Witch.